Hello everyone. As we know, among many democratic countries in the world, it should be extremely rare to have a coup. While in those countries with authoritarian and dictatorial regimes, a coup is a probable event. The Chinese Communist State is one of these countries. In the short 70 years that the CCP had ruled the mainland, there have been several successful or attempted coups. The CCP's top leaders have never stopped playing games with each other in order to hold on to power. According to Wikipedia, a coup d'état is an act of military rebellion or political action by a group of people in a country to seize power through conspiracy and planning. If a coup can be successfully completed, it results in a transfer of power, a change of government, or a change in the system of government. However, the several coups that have taken place within the CCP so far have not touched on a change in the system of government, indicating that those people who pushed for the coup did not want to abandon the CCP as an evil party. But with the accumulation of CCP's evils and people's resentment and anger at being oppressed by the CCP spreading across China, who can guarantee that the next coup will not turn China upside down, as what happened in the Soviet Union in 1991? Before today's show begins, please take two seconds to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell. Your support is a great motivation for us to continue to do a good job. Okay, back to business. Here we talk about the four major successful and attempted coups in Zhou Nanhai in the past decades. Because in the previous episode, we have already covered the attempt coup of Lin Li Guo in the 1970s. So the four major coups we are going to talk about in this episode do not include this one. Considering that the contents of the four major coup events are quite numerous, we will present this episode in two parts for your convenience. Today, we will start with the two coups as the first part. The first one is a military coup of 1976, in which Hua Guofeng, Ye Jianying, and others arrested the Gang of Four. In September 1976, Mao Zedong brought huge disaster to the Chinese nation, and despite his reluctance, still followed the 8341 prophecy. And as expected, he reported to Marx on schedule. Although he appointed Hua Guofeng as his successor, the gang of four that Mao relied on during the late Cultural Revolution still had a lot of power. Among the four, Jiang Qing, Mao's wife, was a deputy head of the infamous central leading group of the Cultural Revolution and was elected as a member of the Politburo after the 9th Congress. Zhang Chunqiao, the leader of the Shanghai Commune during the Cultural Revolution, was the deputy head of the central leading group of the Cultural Revolution and was later elected as a member of the Politburo Standing Committee and Vice Premier of the State Council. Wang Hongwen, the leader of the largest workers' rebellion in Shanghai, became Vice President of the State Council and a member of the Politburo Standing Committee at the time of the 10th Congress, and was a successor of Mao's intention. Yao Wenyan was elected as a member of the Politburo for publishing his article, Review of the New Historical Drama, Hand Raised Dismissal, in Shanghai Wenhui Press which announced the beginning of the Cultural Revolution on November 10, 1965. These four people were totally dependent on Mao's promotion and patronage. After Mao's death, Hua Guofeng, Ye Jianying, Li Xianan, Deng Xiaoping, and others conspired to arrest the Gang of Four and take back their power. Wu Jianhua, the deputy director of the Central Security Bureau of the Communist Party of China, recounted the arrest process in his reminiscent article, My Experience Before and After the Arrest of the Gang of Four. On the morning of October 6, according to the plan that had been drawn up, Wang Doxing, the director of the General Office of the Central Committee, told the Secretary Bureau of the General Office of the CCP Central Committee to inform Jiang Qing, Wen Hongwen, Zhang Junqiao, Yao Wenyuan, and others to convene a standing committee of the Politburo at 8 p.m. to discuss the finalization of the fifth volume of Mouth Anthology. That night, Hua Gofeng and Ye Jianying sat in the conference room inside Hua Ren Hall and waited while Wang Dongxin specifically directed the arrest operation. At 7.55 p.m. that night, Wang Hongwen arrived at the Hua Ren Hall and then was ambushed and confined by the commandos firmly to the front from Hua Gofeng and Ye Jianying about 5 meters away. While he just walked into the small door and did not have a chance to say anything, Wang Hongwen was terrified. Before he could react, he was twisted away from the scene by the action team handcuffed, escorted to the red flag car prepared long ago, and detained in the isolation room. 
At 7:58, Zhang Chunqiao crossed the door of Hui Ren Hall, and then he walked slowly along the east corridor of the auditorium as usual, from south to north. When he stepped into the main hall, ambushes in the small door on both sides of the commandos quickly attacked and controlled him, and then he was handcuffed and escorted into the car to the isolation spot. The car with Zhang Chunqiao escorted went on the road. According to the schedule program, Wu Jianhua rushed to Zhang Yaoqi's place, where to carry out the task of disposition of Jiang Qing, and then together with Zhang Yaoqi to Zhou Nanhai, Chun Jiu Zhai, to carry out the task of detaining Jiang Qing. At 8:25 p.m., Yao Wenyuan arrived at the East Lounge of Hua Ren Hall. As soon as he entered the door, he was arrested by the action team. The whole process of dispose of the gang of four took only 35 minutes, but this was clearly a military coup arranged against Mao. After the gang of four was isolated and examined, it had been detained in an underground project under the unit 8341 until April 10, 1977, when they were transferred to the Qingchen Prison of the CCP's Ministry of Public Security on the order of the Central Committee. In 1981. A special court established by the Supreme People's Court of the Communist Party of China held a so-called public trial of the Gang of Four and found them all to be members of the Lin Biao Jiangqing Counter-Revolutionary Group, blaming them for the Cultural Revolution and sentencing them to certain penalties. However, Jiangqing refused to obey the verdict. Jiangqing's disobedience was justified. The Cultural Revolution was initiated by Mao, and everything Jiangqing did was in accordance with Mao's instructions. Obviously, the reason and purpose of the Chinese Communist Party is to shift the blame from Mao and cover up the evil nature of the Communist Party. With the capture of the Gang of Four, Deng Xiaoping relied on the pragmatists to gradually force Hua Guofeng out of power. At the 12th Communist Party Congress, Hua lost his seat in the portfolio of the CCP Central Committee and fully withdrew from their leadership. Deng Xiaoping became the de facto top leader of the CCP. The second point to be made is a coup d'état. That removed Hu Yaobang and Zhao Ziyang from power. Deng Xiaoping, who held the power of the party and military, supported Hu Yaobang and Zhao Ziyang as general secretaries of the CCP Central Committee, but they were removed from office by Deng for the 1986 Academic Revolution and the June Fourth Movement in 1989, respectively. At a meeting of senior Communist Party officials in January 1987. Hu Yaobang was forced to admit that he had erred to conniving to the 1986 academic revolution, but still tried to defend himself. However, he was criticized by Bo Yibo, Song Renbu, Deng Liqun, and others. Only Xin Zhongxun, a member of the political bureau of the CCP Central Committee and secretary of the Secretariat, was supporting Hu Yaobang and denouncing the elders for using cultural revolution tactics to oust the general secretary as abnormal. But after seven days of struggle session, the Politburo approved Hu Yaobang's resignation by a vote of show of hands and elected Zhao Ziyang as acting general secretary. Two years later, as for the general secretary Zhao Ziyang, has faced the same fate. The death of Hu Yaobang has started a student movement in April 1989, and Zhao Ziyang tried to sort the issue out in a calm way. In the beginning, Deng Xiaoping agreed, but soon changed his mind. On the eve of the June 4th massacre. Zhao Ziyang visited North Korea for eight days. Zhao Ziyang's secretary revealed that when Zhao left Beijing, Deng Xiaoping talked to Li Peng, who was China's premier of the State Council, which said the student movement was considered a riot. What Deng Xiaoping tried to do was to anger the student, and the bigger things got, more issues will occur, and it will be easier to get rid of Zhao Ziyang. So during Zhao Ziyang's visit to North Korea, it was believed that April 26 was a prelude to the June 4th incident. After Deng Xiaoping ordered a shooting crackdown on the students, Zhao Ziyang was criticized within the party and was removed from his post. He was then placed under house arrest until his death. Jiang Zemin, who had suppressed the student movement in Shanghai, was rewarded by Deng and succeeded Zhao as general secretary. What Deng did against the nominal top leader of the CCP was actually a coup, except that people didn't dare to say so because Deng was the de facto helmsman of the CCP. Well, that's all for today about the coup that took place in Zhongnanhai after the Communist Party used their power in 1949. So stay tuned for the next episode. If you like our show, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you all for watching.